All right, another scratch video. Let's start off with just some movement. And this is probably a little involved to start off with, but I'm going to go ahead and show it to you anyway. So let's take a look over to the screen on the left uh, with the mouse on it. And you'll see that I have an actor here, which is a mouse. And I have three other actors, which are all pieces of cheese. I happen to choose a hayfield background. Uh, these are all, the mouse is straight out of the scratch library. Uh, he came from this menu down here somewhere. Um, the Hayfield, same thing, is from the backdrop library. So if I hit backdrop and I hit new backdrop from a library picture, which would be down here, the one that looks like a little mountain, that's straight from there. And the cheese, I actually chose a PNG that I had cut out before for one of our other projects. And uh, so I just imported uh, some cheese in there, then I duplicated it. If you right click any sprite, if you hit your little right click, click double tap, you can go down here to duplicate and duplicate that. I'd wait until you got the code in it though, and then once the code is in it, once you duplicate it, then you duplicate the code too. So let's talk about movement for a moment. So if I click on mouse, notice up here there are three tabs. I know you guys can't see my uh, mouse pointer and that's kind of a bummer, but scripts tab shows script, costumes show costume, there's two different mouse costumes, and then sound is just the sound pop, that's the only one that's in, in, in inserted right now. So let's take a look at what this, some, some of this code means. Don't get too intimidated. Let's just focus for a moment on one piece of code and how to build it. So I'm going to just kind of move these other ones out of the way for a moment, and we're going to focus on just the right one. So I'll take a look at this right one down here at the bottom. So here's our focus. So first of all, all of these are color coded. So if you want a brown piece of code, it's in the brown menu. So when green flag is clicked, it would come from this menu, and you just drag it down and place it on the screen. The next thing we're going to need is forever loop and it's a yellow. So you go to control menu, you grab a yellow and you just drag it underneath when green flag is clicked and it'll pop in there. The next thing you see then is also another yellow and it's an if then statement. So these are called conditionals. You grab your if then statement and you just work it inside your forever loop. It might take a try or two, but it'll go inside. The next thing to pop in is called a sensing menu thing. And it says when key space is pressed. Now, what we're going to do is once we put this key space is pressed in, we're going to put it inside the if then part statement. You'll see that this actually comes in and out as long as it highlights. Watch it highlight. Eh, nope, didn't highlight. See it highlight? Drops right in. So then once you get it in, you can use the arrow key to change it to whatever you want. Okay, for right now, we're building if right arrow is pressed. So we put if right arrow is pressed and we do two things at that point in time. We tell the sprite to point in the direction of 90, which is his default direction, and we also change X by 5. So you'll see what happens here. If I press to the right, he'll go to the right. By the same token, I also change these. If you'll go down, let's take a look at left right here beside it. All I did was duplicate this script. If you right click and hit duplicate, it'll duplicate the exact same script. Once it does, all I really did was I changed the right arrow then. I used this arrow key and change it to left arrow. Instead of change X by positive 5, I change it to negative 5. And instead of pointing direction to 90, I pointed direction to negative 90. And again, this is just a pull down menu. So as you can see, when I click the screen over here, I can move right. I can move left. If I move left, oops, sorry. All right. So I should be able to move right and left when I click the screen here. Move left, move right, move left, move right. All right, so up and down aren't too much different. I'll let you look at those on your own time, but the basic concepts is I changed it to the down arrow, and you can see here that I've changed the direction a little bit. If you're wondering where I got these blue um, things here, understand, again, this is all color code. Those are the motion menu. So if I need to change Y by, there's my change Y by statement that I slid in there. If I need to point in the direction, there's my point in the direction statement that I slid in here. So again, rely on your color code. So these four here just do up, down, left, and right. So I'm going to pull those out of the way for a minute, and we'll just take a look at the last one. So the last one just says if any key is currently being pressed, switch costumes every 0.3 seconds. So again, let's take a look at some of this other stuff. I thought my mouse was too big, so I wanted to size him down, so I did do something from the looks menu, and I said, you know what, I want to set his size to only 75% because he's too big. The second thing is a lot of times what we want to do is we want to initialize where he starts. Every single time I start the program, he'll start at 00, which is the dead middle of the screen. And again, you can find this on the blue menu. 
And then this is built much like the other ones. There's just a little bit difference here. Notice that this next costume is part of the purple menu. You can find it down here somewhere. There it is. And also notice that there's a wait time from the yellow menu. So the control menu has a wait. And I just put it in and I typed it in. So all this does is, let's look at costume then. Do you notice he's got two different costumes? If I switch back and forth, watch his feet move. It kind of looks like he's rowing a boat or something. I'm not exactly sure. But if you switch these back and forth, you'll just see his feet move. So if I tell this costume in this script, just says if any key is pressed down, animate. It, again, it doesn't look the best, but it kind of looks like he's actually walking. So up, down, left, and right, and he's walking around. And if you can get this written here where you have a character of some sort, you don't have to pick the mouse, but not a bad idea. If you have a character of some sort that can move in all four directions and he can animate while you're at it, that'd be fantastic start. So let's just start there. Thanks.